I'm now joined by Jesse Cugliata, Global Head of Healthcare and Life Sciences at Snowflake, along with Olivia Von Nita, VP of Business Operations at McKesson. Such a pleasure to be with both of you here today. Thrilled to be here. Thank you for having us. So let's jump right in. The potential impacts of AI on the healthcare and life sciences industry are expected to be far reaching. What are you both seeing and where do you see this technology driving the most impact? Jesse, let's start with you. Yeah, I get this question a lot. Everyone is trying to figure out what will the impact be of AI on the industry, on our jobs, on our investments, ways of working, and ultimately on the, on the patient care itself. And people start to bifurcate into two camps, because when you talk about use cases in this space, you have you know, what I like to call the dreamers, folks who say, AI is going to revolutionize the world and it's both going to threaten humanity yet save humanity at the same time. And generally they're talking about use cases around things like advanced drug discovery or automated diagnosis, these really you know, far reaching things that, that folks are certainly working on right now. And then you have the other camp that looks at this more, a little bit more realistically and they say, you know, there are problems that we can solve today and these are problems that have been plaguing the industry for years. You know, people are trying to do things like improve knowledge management, where they're, they're summarizing a large corpus of data and putting this in front of a call center rep at a payer, for example, so they can more effectively deal with a claims issue. I'll give you another example, because I was talking with a, a physician's group a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about how they're leveraging AI for patient discharge instructions when someone leaves the hospital. And they said, ironically, the AI written discharge instructions are actually more human and less scientific than what the doctors would write. And they said, that, you know, not only are these better, but it actually has a tangible impact. They said, this is reducing our readmission rates, which is one of the key metrics that they're tracking, as patients have a better understanding of what their instructions are and what they need to do. And they also saw that patient satisfaction scores are actually going up as well, which impacts reimbursement rates as well. Great. So we're starting to see all sorts of different use cases. Some are far reaching, and then some are more tangible in the near term. Jesse, thank you so much for those insights. Olivia, would love your thoughts as well. So for us, uh, AI is here to stay. And AI is as good as the data that it's trained on. And so at McKesson Compile, we have analytics ready data. What that means is the data is cleansed, deduplicated, linked, and analytics ready. So our clients in the biotech and pharma spaces can use those to power their analyses. I'll give a quick example from my time when I worked at a large pharma company. Um, roughly two thirds of our product was sold to doctors and dispensed at, uh, written via prescription from a doctor. And one third was through a hospital system or a health system. And without this linked data sets, we had this problem where two thirds of our data was at the doctor level and a third was here and we didn't have any way to tie it together. So when we let loose our models on it, they didn't really have actionable or like usable business insights for our sales and marketing team. So with McKesson Combiles analytics ready data, you can pull this together and then, you know, really unleash the power of AI on top of that. Thank you for that. Olivia, McKesson has been shaping the direction of healthcare for over 190 years. How is your data foundation helping to position the business for the next century? So McKesson has been around for quite a long time, as you mentioned, and they are really the backbone of the logistics and U.S. healthcare landscape in a lot of ways. And so they're, they have a rich wealth of data that they just generate from day-to-day -day operations. And as of January 2024, when Compile joined the McKesson uh, family, we Compile brings our expertise of over a decade of really making data analytics ready, easy to use, and this deep expertise in data. And so we are so excited for the future to be able to pull together uh, and come at it from a position of strength for both the McKesson, the historical McKesson and the historical Compile side to generate these new novel products that haven't been in market before. So stay tuned for the next couple months for some great exciting announcements. It's an exciting next chapter indeed. It is, it really is. The volume of breadth of sensitive regulated data that healthcare and life sciences organizations collect, create, and manage represents a major challenge. Jesse, how does the AI data cloud help take this concern off the table? Well, I think you're right. Governance and security are really paramount for the healthcare and life sciences industry. And, and, and first, the table stakes. You know, Snowflake is HIPAA compliant, we're high trust certified, we're compatible with the GXP guidelines that are set by the FDA. And a lot of the individual line items that are written out in the statutes from some of those regulatory authorities, they're actually built-in capabilities of our product. Uh, Role-based access control, multi-factor authentication, disaster recovery, query and audit history. There's nothing special that you have to do to turn those on. Those are available out of the box with Snowflake. And that's why we have over a thousand customers across the entire healthcare and life sciences ecosystem at this point. And to your point around where does the AI data cloud come in, well, that's the other aspect that's really making this easier for a lot of folks. Because if you think about the traditional way that organizations have either worked together or exchanged data with one another, typically somebody is extracting that from their warehouse, they're putting it into a file, they're shipping it off to someone else's FTP site, and then someone else has to pick it up. 
But at that point, you've effectively lost control of governance of it. You know, you're, you're kind of securing data through contractual obligation at that point versus any sort of way of doing this more sophisticated. Whereas with Snowflake, when you actually share information, it stays where it stays at the in the host location. So not only is it more secure, but it's more convenient for the end user. And we're starting to see folks take this a step further now, where it's not just about sharing data anymore, but can actually bring logic or applications to the customer's host environment as well. Organizations like Datavant, for example, their tokenization capability now runs natively on a, a Snowflake customer's account. Thank you for that, Jesse. And for the audience watching, what steps can they be taking now to position their businesses for future success in the years ahead, specifically in the healthcare and life sciences space? Olivia, why don't we start with you? I will keep it short and sweet, which is shore up your data foundation. As we look to the future, there's only going to be more and more data, and so making sure that the way you approach these problems today, having a cleansed, linked, deduplicated, analytics-ready data set is a great way to make sure that you're set up for whatever comes next. Thank you, Olivia. And Jesse, from your perspective. You know, I, I think you really hit on it there. This has traditionally been an industry where healthcare and life science has not been the fastest to adopt new technology, but we're not seeing that being the case with AI. You know, I think the industry was really forced to be very agile, very dynamic during the COVID crisis, and that ethos has really stayed on in, in the ensuing four to five years. And the organizations who are doing this best are thinking about three things. One, you just hit on it, is making sure you have the proper data foundation to do this right, because you can't chat GPT your way to all of the different answers that people need in a healthcare context. It really relies on your own enterprise data in a lot of cases to get this right. And then the second piece is, figure out what is the level of complexity that you want to take on if you're going to do this. For example, do you want to buy all the parts and build the car yourself, or do you just want to buy the car? And if it's the former, do you have the AI skill set under your roof to actually build the car? And then the third one, going back to what we talked about in the beginning, is that looking around at every corner of your organization about where AI could have an impact, because often it's in places that you wouldn't traditionally think of, like we talked about, some of that lower hanging fruit is where you can get an immediate impact today and use that to build the case for future investment and momentum with additional projects. Well, thank you so much for joining me on Data Cloud Now here at Snowflake Summit. The energy and buzz is all around us. Such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having so us. Much. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green, and this is Data Cloud Now. Thank you.